How's it going guys? So here's our CJ5 Jeep. And you know that all of these old Jeeps, you know, especially the ones from like the 60s to 70s, the steering absolutely sucks on them, right? You know, you go down the road, you can just turn the wheel left or right. It's, I mean, it's a cause with, with the old, a lot of old vehicles. I mean, if I come over here to my uh, my Ford Fairlane project sitting over here in the mud, and I open this up, I mean, I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of play in that steering wheel with nothing else moving, okay? And so here's, you know, especially on the Jeep, I'm going to show it on the Jeep because it's easy to see, but here's how you kind of diagnose this quick. Now, it's easier to do with two people. You have a friend, definitely get your friend to help because you can go through all of the components instead of just a few. But you're gonna come in here and you can see my steering wheel has some movement in it, right? But we're not really moving the wheels. You can see I'm just hitting to the point to where the wheels are starting to wanna move. You know, it's rocking just a little bit. You see that? Where it's just starting to get the pressure on there. Okay, so that's where you need to figure out. You're locked to lock. Not locked to lock, but you know, your, your movement's a movement without a moving. Now we're gonna come up over here. We're gonna look inside of here. You see the steering knuckle? Okay, look, we're rotating there. So now we can assume that between here and that point is relatively good. Now there could be slop in there. You know, we can come back up and maybe have slop in there. But let's just assume that from, down, from here to there is good. So let's come down here. If you're lucky, you can grab this and rotate it. Which we can, okay? There's, there's not a lot of tension in there. So again, we can rotate it back and forth. We can look here and see how much slop we have in this U-joint, because that's just a U-joint with a greasable insert in there. Well, it's just a U-joint. We can look how much slop we have in here. It's not too much. So let's keep moving down. Okay, so now we're gonna fob this back and forth. We're gonna go down in here. We can see that that's rotating down in there, right? Now what is that supposed to move right after that? Do we know? Can we figure it out? So we'll come over here. Okay, now we're gonna look up in here. So you got your shaft running down. And right up in here, we have our steering box, right? So, our insert into our steering box is rotating, but nothing else is rotating. Which tells us that the issue is in the steering box, okay? You need to do this when you're, when you're going through trying to diagnose stuff, because it could be tie rod ends, okay? But you see that that movement's not in there. Not that I could really move this too easy because it's in the mud right now, but this is kind of the way you need to diagnose this. If slop in the steering wheel, follow it down. That slop ends right here, at least for right now. So we know that we have that much slop in that steering box. Now, if the steering box was tight and, you know, we have movement back and forth, you know, down towards where the tie rods start, then we can look there and see where the slop's at. But right now we know it's in the steering box. So we come back up here. Not that you could see this very well from here, but if you were going a little further, where we start having the, the tire movement, now when somebody else was doing that, you would be able to watch for that slack in the tie rod end. You'd be able to watch for that movement up in here. The same thing goes with all wheel components, okay? If you need to check anything to do with your steering, your suspension, lift the vehicle up. Well, first check it on the ground because the tire has tension on it. Have somebody inside turn it back and forth while you go down the component, looking at all the pieces. And then like with suspension, okay? Lift it up a little bit, same thing. Push your push your wheel left and right, push your wheel forward and back. Uh, you know, rotate everything, steer back and forth, and you're gonna be able to see if there's slop down here in the, in the joint, or if there's slop up in that joint, or you know, wherever you have issues going on. This is how you diagnose things, okay? This is better than just throwing parts at it, I promise. Because if you look up right now, for example, why your Jeep, you know, why Jeeps could have such bad steering, you're gonna hear all sorts of things like that you need to replace the column and that you need to replace all your, your tie rod ends, and you need to do this, and you need to do that. And without diagnosing it, you're just gonna keep throwing parts at it. A big one right now is the fuel pump, right? We all know about the fuel pump sending units. Ignore the fact that I ripped my whole rear bumper off, my fuel tank's barely holding on. We all know about the fuel pump rear sending units. So instead of just buying stuff and throwing at it, because everyone assumes that the gauge cluster is bad in there, it's usually the sending unit in the fuel pump. It isn't, you know, getting that uh, 
potentiometer flow, that zero to 100 smooth transition. So you need to be able to test that. You need to know how to hook up a meter quick and then lift and drop that float and see if it's actually changing the, the, the values. That, that whole sending unit for the fuel pump, which by the way, you know, changes out all of your, your uh, filters and your pickup and all the hosing and stuff like that. It's a lot cheaper than that, that gauge inside there. Could the gauge be wrong? Yeah. I mean, mine's sitting still and saying I'm going 15 mile an hour. You know, that gauge could be that wrong, that cluster could be. But you need to know how to test it. Figure out what's wrong with it and how to fix it. So, uh, yeah. I'm Dustin with Hard Cruise Racing. It's a quick little video just on how to test things, how to understand, you know, physical moving components on your vehicle. The same process goes for the rear end, the same process goes for front suspension, steering, drivetrain. You know, if you need to figure out if you have U joints bad on a, on a drive shaft, same thing. You get under there, you rotate it back and forth, you look for that movement. So, uh, yeah, get out there, build cool things. You know, I want to see your restoration projects. As you can see, we're just getting started on this one. Got a long way to go. Got the batteries charging now so we can start doing wiring diagnostics. You know, but we're playing around with some ideas. Got a video out right now about restoring metal. As you can see, we only did the top just so you can see the before and after. You can see how bad this is, though. Flaky. But we're doing some res restoration videos on Jeeps. Um, specifically with this Jeep, we're going to have fun with it. This is getting converted into a search and rescue vehicle um, because we do search and rescue and emergency response. So this Jeep will be quite a cool little trail search and rescue rig. So get out there and remember, as much as I want you to watch my YouTube video, sitting on YouTube isn't getting them projects done. So build cool things. Tag us in those cool things when you build them. Subscribe because, well... You already watched my video. YouTube's already going to show you my new videos. Might as well give me that subscription, right? Helps me out. But hey, have fun. Have a good day.